Hey everyone, this is Adam and today I'm going to be showing you a quick tutorial on how to sync your spreadsheet content from Airtable into your Figma layers using the CopyDoc plugin. So to get started, all we need to do is go to our Figma file, click on the resources icon at the top, and if you search for CopyDoc, so that's C-O-P-Y-D-O-C, and under the plugins tab, if you click on the CopyDoc result, you can run the plugin by either clicking on this run button here, or I'd recommend clicking on this save icon here, and that's gonna save it to your plugins list for easy access. So I've already clicked on the save icon, so I'm just gonna to go to my canvas, right click anywhere, go down to plugins, then go down to saved plugins, and click on the copy doc item. And that's just gonna run the Figma plugin that we saved a second ago. So if you're new to the plugin, it has a bunch of different features to help you update text in your Figma designs. But for today, I'm just gonna be focusing on this sync content feature so that we can pull in spreadsheet data from the Airtable platform into your Figma designs and sync up those layers. So what we're gonna do is just click on the sync content button in the plugin here. And then what we're gonna do is make sure the content tab is selected underneath this little tab section here. And then we wanna change the default sync option from CSV Excel file and click on that drop down and change that to sync from Airtable URL. So if you click on sync from Airtable URL, that's gonna change the data source to Airtable and it's gonna allow us to add a new Airtable into our Figma plugin. So what we need to do for this is to get our Airtable URL. So in this case, I've already created an Airtable uh, in my browser. So you can see here, I've got my Airtable uh, set up. So all I'm gonna do is copy that link. So I'm just gonna grab that link from the URL bar and paste it into the URL field here in the plugin. So I'm pasting that in. So you can see it's saying that it's a valid Airtable URL. It's picking up on the uh, URL that we've just pasted. And then the next thing we need is the token. So if you click on the token link, that's gonna open up the browser to your developer hub page. And at the moment, I don't have any personal access tokens created. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on the create token button in the Airtable developers page, click on create token and give this a name. So I'm just gonna call this copy doc plugin integration. And for scopes, you can see in the plugin, it's saying that we need to add the data.records.read scope. So make sure that you click on add a scope and select the data.records read scope. So I've just selected that in there. And then importantly, you need to grant the API token access to the base that your table is in, in Airtable. So click on add a base and I'm just gonna add the copy doc base that I've got set up here and just say all current and future bases in this workspace. So that'll be different for your end, but just select the place where you know you're gonna be reading the spreadsheet data from and add that in. And then you wanna go ahead and click on the create token button in the bottom here, click on create token, and then you can copy this to your clipboard by clicking on this little copy icon here. So that's copied the token to our clipboard and it will only show it to you once. So if you wanna save that somewhere secure, uh, now's your chance to do that, but I'm just gonna copy it to my clipboard and paste it into the plugin here where it says personal access token. So I'm pasting that in. So we've added in our Airtable personal access token. And then now we just wanna give this Airtable a label. So I'm just gonna call this one movies uh, or movie posters. So I'm just gonna say movie poster uh, details. And I'm just gonna click on save new Airtable. So I'm gonna click save new Airtable now and that's gonna load in the Airtable data for me. And you can see here that it's loaded up the data. So going back to our spreadsheet here, you can see in Airtable, it's currently set up with these four columns. So we've got uh, title, genre, minutes, and poster. And if we go back to the plugin here, you'll see that that content has all been pulled in to this preview down here. So what this is relating to is the Figma layers in our designs. So you can see here, we've got a few layers already set up with those named layers. So if we open up this panel here, you'll see that the layers are named poster. So hash poster is this little rectangle layer. That's where our image is gonna go. We've got hash title, hash genre, and hash minutes. So these layer names in Figma all match up to the header names in the spreadsheet. So you just have to make sure that the names that you give to each column in your Airtable at the very top are named exactly the same as your Figma layers inside of each uh, frame that you wanna sync up. So to show you what this looks like when we now sync those layers, I'm just gonna select a few different layers. So you can see I'm selecting uh, the number of layers is getting reflected here. So every layer that you select is gonna get looped through and the matching layers inside of each one is gonna map to the content for each row. 
So to give you an example, I'm just going to do these three and I'm just going to click on sync rows with layers. And you can see that that's downloaded the content from Airtable and synced it to our Figma layers here. So it's basically swapped out the content for uh, the hash title, hash poster, hash genre, and hash minutes. And that's all been replaced with the real content that we pulled in from our Airtable here. Now, if you're wondering how to quickly get started with this, you can click on this go back button here. And if you wanna get a sample CSV, so a sample spreadsheet of this data structure to give you a bit of a quick head start, you can actually just click on this content sample data CSV link here. And that's gonna save it to your computer. So you can just click on save. I'm just gonna replace the one I've already got there. And if we open that up, you can see that we've got this content sample data CSV file. And this is exactly the same data that I've got loaded into Airtable. So this is just an example, again, of an easy way to get a quick overview of what that data structure looks like. The first row being your header. So you just wanna give each column the name of the layer that you wanna match in Figma. So make sure that's matched up. And then you can proceed to add each row with the content for each of those different items uh, per column. So you can add as many rows as you want. And importantly, you can also sync these automatically. So if you don't wanna create all of the rows beforehand and copy paste those, so I'm just gonna delete those ones now, you can actually automatically sync those and repeat them as well. So now that we've got our Airtable saved, we can easily go back to that just by selecting it from our list. If you've added more by clicking on this little plus icon, you can add more Airtables if you like. But for now, we've just got this one. So I'm just gonna select that one again click on the load content preview button here and that's going to load up our Airtable data again and you can see here we've got this little switch that says auto repeat so if you want to automatically repeat a single row you can do that by enabling the auto repeat toggle up here and you can see that the messaging has changed to say select a single figma layer that contains your named layers so before it was saying select multiple layers the example we just did a minute ago but in this case we're just going to repeat one layer as many times as the rows appear inside of your spreadsheet. So in this case, it's gonna loop through one, two, three, four. And so we can click on this single card layer here. And again, we've got our named layers inside of that layer. So now that we've got the frame selected, we can click on the sync and repeat selected layer button here. And that's gonna pull in all of the content, but this time it's gonna automatically copy that original layer and duplicate it as many times as the content appears in your spreadsheet. So you can see it's taken this original card here, it's copied that layer, automatically pasted it four times, and it's swapped out all of the data for each row from our Airtable. So that's a really quick way of automatically looping through your uh, Airtable spreadsheet rows if you don't wanna manually copy paste, you know, 100 different layers. I'll also show you how to add uh, this to an auto layout frame that already exists. So for example, if we take this component here and I'm just gonna copy that and paste it into this horizontal auto layout container down here. So this is a frame that has auto layout applied over here in Figma. So you can see the auto layout toggle. So that's got it applied and it's going from left to right. So it's a horizontal layout. And because we've got this uh, card inside of the layer, so I'm just gonna actually put in the instance instead of the component. So I'll pull out the component. So you can see we've got an instance of this original component inside of our auto layout frame. So we've got this auto layout frame with horizontal layout applied. And so what we can do is we can select the card inside of that auto layout frame. And because the parent layer has auto layout already applied, this time when we click on the sync and repeat selected layer, which I'll do now, you'll see that it automatically copy and paste those layers inside of the existing auto layout frame. So this can be really handy if you've already got a design that has auto layout applied to the parent of the layer that you want to repeat. You can just select that layer as long as it's inside of an existing uh, auto layout frame. And that way it will just automatically repeat those layers for you and leave the original one alone. So you can either hide that or use it as you like. So because these are instances as well, the cool thing about that is we can then edit the main component up here and that's gonna automatically edit all of the duplicated instance that we just added via the copy.plugin. plugin. So that's pretty cool as well. So I definitely recommend using a component-based uh, original layer up here and then creating an instance of that component to use with the repeat feature. And that's gonna make it really scalable for you to apply changes in one place. So you can see here I can change uh, text sizes, 
and all different things like that to make it really easy for me to adjust that component with all the synced layers. So yeah, that's basically it. Uh, I just wanted to show you this in case you're a fan of the Airtable platform and you want to use this as an alternative to the other options available, which are the CSV and Excel file imports or the Google Sheets URL imports. So now we've also got the sync from Airtable URL imports where you can add your own Airtable spreadsheet data to use with the sync uh, content feature. Uh, you can also use the other tabs. So you can use the Airtable URL as the source for your other data. So if we switch from content to table, clicking on this tab here, you can see we can now click on the load table preview button. And if we load that up, this is gonna allow us to import a table directly into our page. So if I click on the uh, generate table from rows button, I can also make this zebra striped. I'll just do that for now and click on generate table from rows. This is gonna create a brand new table inside of your Figma file automatically with auto layout applied. So you can see here, I can uh, move that around, scale it up and down as needed. And again, because this is using components automatically, I can do things like scale the poster size. So I can just increase that. And that's gonna look really good uh, when I do change that. So yeah, that's basically it. As I said, feel free to play around with the other options. You can do charts, you can do styles, table uh, content, and the sample data for each of those is available here. Just click on that little link and click save. And if you need a bit more detail or help, you can click on the docs link for any of these options as well. So just go ahead and click on that docs link for any of these tabs, and that'll give you a bit more detail about how to use them. Uh, but hopefully this has been a good tutorial if you're using Airtable, and you can now use that as a data source for the CopyDoc sync feature. So thank you as always for watching, and we'll be back with more Figma tutorials like this one very soon.